Hello, Socialist Rain. Um, your story really messed me up. I, yeah, the, the hypocrisy involved. Um, it's all I've ever seen in my life. From uh, the so-called righteous. All I've ever seen is hypocrisy. I've, I've seen some pretty good people that were religious, but, you know, and they all fail, you know, a little bit because everybody's fallible sinners, but I haven't seen any real, real Christians. All I've ever seen are these dress-up Christians. Um, you know, they put it on and then they take it off. And then they go and lie and cheat and have affairs and um, and get everything their way. And they even get to make the rules and force other people to abide by their rules and their descriptions and their definitions and their limitations. I mean, God, I hate it. I really do. Um, I think one of the best Christians I ever saw was my grandmother, but she was a horrible gossip, and uh, while she had a heart of gold, uh, she did have a slight racist uh, st you know, streak. I mean, it was a product of her time. I mean, she was nice to everybody, but, uh, you know, she the darker the skin, the more she kind of uh, looked at you as some other kind of human being instead of recognizing that we're all just human beings, you know. And but she was very good. She used to, re you know, feed bums and stuff, but um, I haven't seen too too many good ones. Like, And, I mean, even my grandmother judged people and was a horrible gossip. And um, uh, I don't know if my story can be of any use to you because... I mean, I've never had kids myself. Uh, I've never even been married. Uh, I've had some relationships, and uh, and many of them didn't work out because I, I'm an atheist, and I, that's all. The only kind of women I run into are religious women, uh, and they put up with me for a while and consider me their doubting Thomas, and then they realize suddenly it's never. This isn't going to change. He's going to stay that way. And then it's over. I could lie. And they settle for guys who lie. You know, someone who says all the right things and does whatever he wants. And the world's their oyster because they have no honor. <laughs> uh, I have seen so much hypocrisy and meanness in religion. Uh, I can't even begin to go into it. Uh, well, i got a few minutes. Uh... I'm not even sure what branch of religion I was raised in, you know, from the, you know. I mean, I was hearing about Jesus before I heard about my ABCs, you know, so, I mean, they started the brainwashing pretty early on me, and upon my sister, and, uh, she's a Christian, I'm not, so, see how it goes, but, uh, I don't think I ever was a good Christian, I, I was always a backsliding Christian when I was a kid, and I used to dread that it, that this horrible Sunday charade wouldn't turn out to be an eternity. I mean, I, it would be kind of hard to tell the difference between hell and heaven, you know, if, uh, if that's what it is. Just choir practice and hypocrisy and praise ye, praise ye, you know, that sickening, nauseating. <sighs> I've had a few myself. <laughs> uh, I don't know what branch they were. They were some kind of a Calvinist extraction. They uh, they were really nutty. And everybody was brother this, sister that, but only if you went to their little uh, meeting hall on 65th Street. You know, <laughs> That's where heaven was happening. You know, uh, They believed that. They believed that destiny led the right people to this one little teeny pinprick on a map somewhere in the world and uh, apparently it was Bethlehem at one time and uh, <laughs> then it became 65th Street in South Sacramento 
and I hated that place. I hated it. Uh, I thought about taking pictures of it and putting it on a YouTube you know, uh, video, but they've sweetened up the billboards outside. I, when I was a kid, it was calligraphy, and it was after death, the judgment. Now it's, uh, it's all nice. It's all, uh, um, you know, you, God wants you to be rich, you know. <laughs> Please come in and give us your money. Um, I got in a lot of trouble for asking questions, <laughs> but I'm not going to go into my deconversion story. I'll just talk about them. I witnessed that uh, little church and a couple of satellite churches that were in the clique together, and they would have conferences every year of uh, their, their little satellites, and but they would have a disagreement on, like, where a comma goes, what something means. They would suddenly, and the whole world would come apart, and next thing you know, there are people not talking to each other, and, and then they're having a, a meeting somewhere else now. And they're almost what they used to be, but now they have that comma, or whatever the fuck. And, uh, and of course, people from our meeting hall would go over there and sit in on their service and record it and then the next week everyone would know already and they would uh, get that that same uh, message uh, dissected and in little clips of tape and uh, everyone just shake their head you know at oh god they used to they used to be uh, god they're damned now damn them uh, I saw some shunnings. I've even experienced that. <laughs> Didn't bother me too much. Uh, I remember as a kid watching a, uh, them shun a woman. And I didn't know the story until much later. Uh, I don't know if it's really applicable, but it's full of hypocrisy. She had had an affair because her husband was uh, not paying attention to her. And we found out later on why. <laughs> uh, he went for counseling to the my grandfather and all the gray-haired elders that sat in the front pew, uh, front pew and take turns going up and doing their sermon and calling all the psalms and calling on who's going to do the prayer and and they were the they were the patriarchs and everybody knew everyone was in on it and this woman uh she went to church and she didn't, I guess, didn't know that her husband had gone to them, you know, the patriarchs, and said about the affair. Didn't mention the fact that he was a secret fag, but that came up much later. Uh, apparently, she was starved for affection, and she really did have an affair. She was a sweet lady. Uh, she still goes to that church, if you can't believe that. They would uh, pass a collection plate past, and, you know, she put money in, everyone put money in. Then the bread and wine went by, and it stopped at the person sitting next to her and went back. And then the usher took it, passed it to the row behind. And then the other usher would pass it back to her row, all the way up to the lady sitting beside her, who would take their chunk of pie crust, you know, and uh, their ripple, and uh, and pass it back, and I just I was I always sat in the back, drawing dirty pictures most of the time and ignoring the whole thing, until I started underlining things, and that's where the trouble started, because I'd read the rest of it and find out that they were quote mining. Uh, I watched her cry, and I didn't understand because I think I was like seven or eight, and later on I I understand she begged she actually grabbed my crawled on her belly and hugged my grandfather's ankles and begged to be let back into the church. My parents got disgusted and they actually left the church. And uh, they both remained Christians. You know, they're not together anymore, but they're both Christians. But uh, they never went back there except for memorial services. And um, I got to stay away. And it was like heaven. I used to dread that place. They always would... I went through hell for asking questions. 
All I wanted was answers. I mean, shame on me. Uh, I really, I feel bad for you. I, I, I don't know what to say. You could point out about this 2012 that uh, people keep predicting the end of the world, and they believe in Jesus. Even he said nobody knows, not even him, apparently. Yeah, well, don't tell them that part. I don't want to get you in more trouble. Uh, God, I hope everything works out. Uh, this is heartbreaking. Take care of yourself. Peace.